Welcome to CSE 103 Intro to Computing to our Fall 2020 version of Python Pumpkin using Turtles. I last did this a year ago, I believe. So we're going to do this in Replit this year instead of doing it in Trinket. And this is a sample, so let me run it. And basically it's a pumpkin made of circles with triangles and two kind of odd shapes. It's really not that hard. We made a black background here, which we can do by using the screen class, which we haven't used so far. We've only used the turtle class, but it's very easy to use. We just kind of create an instance of the screen class and just change the background color to black. It gives you a nicer looking pumpkin instead of just doing it with black triangles in here. So we'll try to do that too. And we're just starting everything on the zero zero point and we're actually doing functions. So we'll review functions and we're only gonna have a couple functions. We're gonna have one function to draw circles. Now there's a circle method in Python Turtle. So you could just draw a circle. You don't have to loop anything or make it go around a whole bunch of times, anything like that. We could just do a circle method. The only confusing part is it uses the radius. So you just have to understand that it's gonna be twice as big as whatever the, the number you put in. We'll have two circles here and we'll call the function twice. And then we'll have a function to draw a triangle and we'll call the function three times. And you can see the only thing that will change will be where the turtle starts when it draws the triangle. So we'll have to use some arguments and parameters for that, for both the circle and for both the triangles, which is really just the starting point. That's all that's really gonna change. And then for these two functions for the mouth and the stem, we're just gonna tell the turtle go to, go to, go to a couple times and then fill it. And then up here, go to, go to, go to. Now you might not know where to go to, but you could just try it out and have them go back to the beginning when it's done. So it's just a little bit of manual labor, I guess, kind of doing that. Or just kind of connect the dots to make the stem and to make the mouth here, and that's about it. And we'll start here at zero, zero, even though it's kind of a little top heavy. We can, you can always scroll it a little bit and put it in the middle when you're done. But since it's still November, I thought we'd get started on one more kind of Python exercise here for a turtle. So this is the sample and we're gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna go into my repels and I'll go into my 103 folder and I'll make a new repel and I'll make sure I use Python with turtle and I'll give it a name. I'll call this, this will be exercise 13 and it'll be called Python pumpkin. It's really a turtle pumpkin, but we'll just call it a Python pumpkin. And you could put your last name initial if you want to put on there. You don't have to. If you just put Python pumpkin, that would be okay. But I'm going to put my initial on there. So 13 Python pumpkin and then create repel. And we're all ready to go here. And the first thing we always have to do is import turtle. And what we're going to do next is create a turtle. So we're going to say T equals turtle. That's the turtle module dot the turtle class. And remember the turtle module is always lowercase. The turtle class always has a capital T and it has parentheses for arguments, although we're not putting any arguments in here. And then we're gonna make a turtle and we won't do a color yet because we'll put the color in the function because when we make the pumpkins, they'll be orange. And then when we make the eyes, they'll be yellow. When we make the stem, it'll be green. So we won't put a color in yet and we won't put a shape. Now what we can do is just put a speed here so things go a little faster since it's gonna be drawing this thing all the time. We'll just put t.speed and I'll just put eight in here so it goes a little faster. Again, I mentioned we don't have to put a shape so I'm just gonna put t.hideTurtle so we don't see the turtle. We don't need to see it so we'll just use hide turtle. We used that before. Since it's just drawing something, we don't need to see the turtle. It's not gonna show up at the end so we could just hide our turtle. So we're gonna instantiate a turtle first, t, and then we'll just use t in all the functions. Now we could have put this in all the functions but I'm just keeping this outside right now. So we'll instantiate outside and then make functions by using t in here. So the first function we'll make is gonna be drawing two circles. Now remember, this always starts at zero and we'll, we'll have to get this started first. So before I even make a function, I'll just say t.circle and Actually, before I do a circle, I'll put a color. So I'll put t.color, and in the color, I'll put orange, like a pumpkin here. So I'm gonna put orange, and remember, they always need quotes in there. They need to be a string. So we're gonna do a circle, and a circle needs a method. So if I just ran it, let me just, just run it right now, just to see what happens. I get an error because um, it says circle takes between one and three positional arguments, and we didn't give any. So we're just gonna throw something in there. Let me just throw in 100. We've been using 100 with squares, just to see what it looks like. Now that's really big, so we're gonna make that smaller. Now actually what it does is it uses the radius. That's why it made it so big. It uses the radius here, so if we put in 100, it's actually doubling it, so it's making it pretty big. So I'm gonna put in 50, and I'll run it. 
and that looks a little small so we'll maybe go somewhere in between i think on the original i think i might have did 70 something like that i think that'll give us a little room there for the for the thing at the top and notice it's starting right here so we might start one over and then start one over to the left a little so they kind of overlap so that's where the center is so we're not just going to make a circular pumpkin kind of like we did with tinkercad we'll kind of have one over here and one over there and we'll we'll adjust it a little bit and we have to fill it so remember we we can put in a, t a, a go to so i'm going to actually put a go to in here and even just start it at zero zero for the for the time being but then we're going to adjust that because remember the go to is something that's going to be something we're going to have to change so we're going to have these circles starting at different locations now i could even have them start down a little bit you know we could do that and just make them go like minus uh you know minus 50 or something that'll put our pumpkin more in the middle i didn't do that last time but we could do that so let's try that so before we draw our circle We'll tell them to go to. We'll say t dot go to, and we'll probably need a pen up, but we'll start with a go to, and then we'll say let's go to let's go to 20 and let's go to minus 50 because we're gonna do one that goes over. Well, let's just go to zero first. We'll just make one, and then we'll worry about moving them over. But we'll go down a little bit. We'll go like minus 50, and you know it should go right about there. That'll look better, I think, for the pumpkin. And then we'll just have to adjust everything from there. So we'll say go to zero 50 and draw a circle. Well, let's just try it. There it is. Now you can see it's drawn a line there. We'll get rid of that line. And that requires doing a pen up. So I'll do T dot pen up. And before he draws a circle, we want his pen down. So we always kind of wrap pen up and pen down around the go to. So we'll say T dot pen down. And now it'll draw the circle without that little line in the middle. And before we draw the circle, just like we did when we drew a square or a stop sign or anything else, we're going to put T dot begin fill because we want to fill this and remember how to do that. And we wrap the begin fill and end fill around the circle. So after he's done drawing the circle, we'll do the end fill. We'll do T dot end fill. So it's just repetitive kind of stuff. This isn't that hard. So we're wrapping pen up and pen down around the go to, we're wrapping begin end fill around the circle. And now when we run the circle, now we have a solid circle. Now we're not going to put any bumpy things on it, but we'll, we'll kind of move one over a little bit and we'll move a second one to the left. So, what we could do now is probably make this into a function. So this thing can be a function. So we're going to say, we'll call it draw circle. So we'll say def. Remember, we have to say def. And I'm going to use draw circle because we haven't done that. And we have to put a colon. Remember, with our function definition of loops, we have to put a colon. And I'll hit enter. Now, it bumped that over, but we have to move these over. So these you can highlight and just hit your tab key and move them over. We now have a defined function that should draw a circle. So what do we need? What do we need? We need a function call. And what do we have to remember to do with our function call? Make sure it doesn't indent. So we have to put it back to the margin and we'll do draw circle. We just put draw circle. Just put the name of the function and make sure it matches up. If you're not sure, just click on it. And we're gonna put our parentheses there. And I'll give it a little separation here. And I'll hit run. And there it goes. Now if you didn't have this call, it wouldn't run. So now it's going to draw the circle. Now what we could do now is use our arguments and parameters. Now we're going to use a parameter for circle because we're saying we want to change its x and y each time. Matter of fact, for the circles, we may just want to change its x. So I could just say change the x because we just want to change where the x is. Um, the y is going to be negative 50. They're both going to be at negative 50, so we're not going to have to change that. Now, with the triangles, we might have to change a y because if we make a nose, it's going to be down further. But we may just use an x here. So that's the only thing that's going to change because if we're starting at negative 50, they're both going to start at negative 50. But what we're going to change is the x, if that makes sense. So instead of 0 here, I'm going to say x. And we're going to draw two circles. One is going to start at, let's go positive, let, I think I did 20. But let me try 30 and see if that's too much. That means when we call the function down here, it's going to send 30 up here, and then 30 is going to get sent here. So it's going to go to 30 and negative 50. So it'll go over to 30, and it's down from the center. So that's why it's kind of showing up, because this is the center point. See, if we center it, it, it kind of goes up a little bit. So so we're, mo we're moving it down so it looks a little bit nicer uh, since it starts typically starts up here, and it's going to make it top heavy. So anyway, let's run this and see what happens. And there it is, it's over. Now it's hard to see how far over it is until we do a second one. So let's do a second call. We'll do our second call to make more of our pumpkin shape. So I'm gonna go here and I'll copy that and paste it. And then the second one is gonna be at negative 30. Now remember, this is only the X. 
So we're only changing the x. The y is both at negative 50 down here, but the x this time is at 30, and the next x where it starts is going to be at negative 30. So we're making sure it's at either side. Now, if it makes a little kind of wedge here, we'll see how this looks. They may be too far apart. There's one, there's a second one. Does that look like a pumpkin? I don't know. I think, I think they need to be a little bit closer. So let's make them 20 and see if it looks a little more pumpkin shaped. And that's good. That, that looks like a pumpkin shape, I guess. Pumpkins are, are not always that wide, but that gives a little bit. So that's pretty good. I think that'll be fine for our pumpkin shape. And just a little bump to the right, a little bump to the left. That's what we're doing here. We're bumping it 20 to the right, 20 to the left, overlapping them. And the only thing changing are those values. So that's our pumpkin kind of base here, the circle. So that part's done. And what we'll do next is do the triangles. So I'm going to highlight all this stuff here. And, you know, why not just... Now, before you before you hit return here, be aware that in Replit, sometimes it, this blue doesn't go away. So make sure you click and make sure that goes away after you copy it. I'm going to make a new function, and I'm going to call it draw triangle. So we're going to make a triangle. And, and of course, triangle is a little hard to spell. And a lot of this stuff's going to change. Now, it's not going to be orange. It's going to be yellow. And we're probably going to change the X and the Y. So I'll put Y here. And again, going from function to function, I think we can just... It just only uses it in itself, so it's not going to care about what the x was up here or anything. So we should be okay with that. So we're going to change the xy every time we draw a triangle. And we're going to go to a certain place here, so I'm just going to put in xy because we're going to send in what the xy is going to be. So you don't need anything here other than xy. It's going to wait for your value. And we'll do the pen up, pen down. We're going to do a, when it goes to its place, then we're going to do a begin fill. And now it's not going to draw a circle. Now if you put circular eyes, that would be easy. But it's going to draw a triangle. Now, I think I told you we weren't going to be doing any loops, but we'll do a loop here because we just have to do it three times. We just have to do a go to forward three times. And I'll show you how to do this. This won't be that hard. And I'll get rid of this because we're going to change this. So I'll just delete that. We don't need that yet. Now, what we're going to do here, instead of t.circle, we're going to do t.forward because remember to draw a triangle, it's going to go forward three times. So I don't know what the size is going to be. I'm just going to throw in like 30 for now. I, I'm not even sure what it's going to be. And now it's going to say t dot left, and we're going to have to put a value in here. Now it's not going to be 90 because 90 is a square. So if you didn't know how to make the angle of a triangle, what you could do is you could do 360 divided by 3, and that should come up with the value. So that should make the angle for you. So, a, so if you did 360 divided by 4, that's 90. That's how you make a square. 360 divided by 3 is going to be whatever angle. So e even if you don't know the angle, it doesn't matter. It'll do the math in there for you and come up with a integer. Hopefully it'll come up with an integer. I think if it's a decimal, you might have an issue, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And now we're going to do this three times. Now if you just did this, let's just run it and see what happens. Well, we can't run it because we need a call. So let's do a call here and we could run it and just see what happens. We're going to... You can't really break it. It's just code. Let me try typing this again, and there it is, draw triangle, because I seem to mess up draw triangle. Now, I'm not sending anything yet, so I have to send something in here. If I send it right now, it would say, hey, you're looking for arguments and we don't have any. So once it gets to the tri draw triangle part, it'll say it wants two arguments and you're not giving us any. So it's looking for something here and we're not giving it. So, you know, if this is negative 50, this might be zero. It might be up 25 and over a little, you know, 25, 10. Let me just draw one and put 25, 10 just to get a starting point. I'm figuring this is this is zero or somewhere around here is zero. If I center this, th this would be zero. So it's going to go up maybe, I think I have these, these off. So I'll do 10, 25. I'll see how that works. And again, we'll just try it out. So this will only draw one triangle. Actually, it won't draw a triangle. It'll draw a line, but let's just see where the line is. There's the circles. There's the line. Actually, that's not too bad. That's the first part of the triangle. And it probably has to go over a little bit to the right. And actually, that's probably not bad as far as where it is. So going up 25 was fine. And I think it has to go over more. I was messing up the X and Y. Remember, this is the X. So that should go over. So that should be like, let's try 20 and see how that goes. That looks OK. And I mean, maybe it could even be a little more. We'll see how big the, these triangles are. It could maybe be like 35 or something. And it, I think that looks OK. So if you see what I'm doing here, now there is going to be a triangle here. Now, if you remember how to do a triangle, we just have to put a for loop. So I'm just going to type for i in range. I'll put parentheses and I'll put my colon and I'll hit enter. 
Now remember, these two lines have to be indented, so I would hit the tab key again, and that means these will run how many times we want, and we don't have to use variables or anything, we're only making a triangle, so it's going to do this three times. And then it should, we already have the begin fill and end fill, we already have the, the yellow color, all that we have to do is just make sure that these positions are okay, at least for one eye, I guess, and then for the other eye, so we'll see what happens here. There we go, circles, that's not too bad. So we just have to do one on the other side, and it's just going to be the opposite, so we probably just have to change the X, because the Y will probably stay the same, because that looks like a good level for the eye. So that's not too hard, so watch how easy this is. We're just going to make a second function call, and instead of 20, 25, now here's, it does get a little confusing, because remember, they start at the left side, so if you're just like, oh, well, it should be negative 20, negative 20 means it'll start there, so you almost have to add whatever the length is, so even though you might think, oh, well, I'll just make the next one, that's my voice of saying, oh, let... <laughs> so even though you might think, oh, it's negative 20, you're still going to have to add 35 to it because it's going to have to start on the other side of the triangle, not, not here. Because if you did this, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. So if I just did this, you'll see what happens. It'll be like in the, almost the middle of his face. You see, we need to, to still add on the length, because negative 20 is fine if it like went in the other direction, but it's drawing it in the same direction towards the right, so it's too close. So we just have to add on 35 to this minus 20. And by when I mean add on, I mean subtract. So it'll actually be negative 55, if that makes any sense. And if not, just throw in some numbers and try them out. I think this will work. Look at that. That's beautiful. So those are our eyes. And then we just have to make a nose. So we just know we have to put them in the middle and just move them down. So we're just going to make one more function call. And you could, I guess I'll type draw triangle. And let's think about where this will be. So his nose will start about there, so uh, maybe it's zero, maybe it's a little negative. I'll start the Y at zero. That's where I'm thinking now. I'm thinking Y. I'm thinking up and down Y. Might be at zero. I mean, we were at like 25. Now it's hard to, it's hard, this is minus 50, and it's hard to, zero is going to be like right about here, I think. Uh, that's the only thing about moving down. It's harder to measure things, but we'll just try it out. So that's where the Y is going to be, and then the X is going to be, remember when we had a, center something. We had to take whatever the size of that is and do half of it. And actually, since we're going to do half, let, let's make the eyes 36 so we have an even number. And that way we can go like down here negative 18 instead of worrying about a fraction. So the triangle is going to start halfway over and then it's going to draw as triangle. So that's why I'm putting 36. And the 36 shouldn't make a big difference between 35. Let's see how this goes. There's the circles. There's the triangle, there's the triangle. That looks pretty good. Actually, that's that's perfect. I don't mind it overlapping. I thought it'd be a little lower. We still have to make a mouth here. And if you want to go a little lower, you know, go like, you know, minus five or something like that. And and then run it. And that's still not bad. So we still have to draw a mouth and we still have to draw a stem. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a break here and then in part two, We'll do the mouth and the stem because that's going to be a little more trial and error. We won't be running them a whole bunch of times. We're only going to run one function for the mouth and one function for the stem. And then we're going to change the background color, which won't be bad at all. So that's the end of part one of Python Pumpkin for fall 2020. And we'll come back with part two and finish off the mouth, the stem, and change the background color.